Who's got kids that struggle with writing? I definitely have some. I've had plenty over the years. And so I decided today's video is going to be just sharing some tips, uh, simple things that I do with kids that have difficulty writing. And I'm not necessarily talking about the content of their work. We know a lot of our kids knowledge is up here and they struggle to get it down on paper and it could be for a variety of reasons. Some kids just don't have that hand-eye coordination, that connectivity, that left brain distinction that's going on. Some kids have muscular issues. Uh, some have a, a diagnosed condition like cerebral palsy or something like that that might be affecting their ability to actually put pencil to paper and write everything that's in their head. And you'll be able to identify these kids quickly because they're the ones that can verbalize it. They could talk and talk and talk and talk and have amazing knowledge about what you're talking about. But then when it comes to writing, they're suddenly reluctant, they're apprehensive, uh, their behavior might change. They might do anything to avoid sitting down and attempting to write. And these are the kids that I'm talking about. So uh, here's some of the strategies that I use. So first thing I always go to um, with those kids is uh, checking if their handwriting is okay, um, how they're holding their pencil, what their pencil grip is like, and making those minor modifications to make sure they're using that right pencil grip. If they're not, I love these, the triangle pencils. It's a little bit hard to see. They're rounded, um, they're very bulky. A lot of kids just need to go back to something like this to help them refine their pencil grip and then it's not so tiring for them to write. I use the same really chunky ones as well for coloring pencils, that's good. And there's also, if you go to Smiggle, these are really cool, my sister-in-law found these. They're square ones, they've even got like little rulers printed on them. They're big and chunky, I write with these every single day. Um, they're awesome, I love them. <clears throat> Barring that, if that's not working for you, there's different types of pencil grips going around and you can get them from any news agent, um, even any stationery shop as well. These are the ones that I like. Sorry, holding it the wrong way. So these just slide onto the pencil if you've got a thin pencil, if you don't get access to any of those thicker ones. Good pencil grip. It's really jelly, squishy for them as well. Helps develop that muscular sort of professionalism <laughs> that they get um, to refine their pencil grip. Uh, other things that I use obviously are the whiteboard, good old whiteboard with the whiteboard marker. Good because it helps, it's got that thicker, if you're using the thick ones, the, the, the thicker grip on there. I'm struggling today, it's Friday. Um, and not also because you don't have to use as much pressure when you use a whiteboard marker. Like I've barely got a tap it and it's made a mark. So there's kids that are really having to concentrate and their, their brain is having to work really hard to get their muscles working on their hands. Anything on here, any mark on there makes it so much easier. And all you've got to do is take a photo and get them to glue that into their book once you've printed it out. So much easier. Another great option that you've got to is um, the standing whiteboard. I might just turn this a little bit here so you can see mine. So again, whiteboard, so it's easier. You've got the thicker marker, take a photo of it. But because it's standing, so it's a different angle that they can work at. Sometimes this angle is not beneficial for some of our kids depending on what development they've got going on. Having it upright can mean that it's actually less stress on their wrist, less stress on their muscles, and they don't physically get as tired when they're writing. So if you've got one of those kids that's been writing away and it's only been one sentence and they drop their pencil, oh, give this a go, standing upright. And if you wanna do it on paper, just use some blue tack and stick some paper up there and then they can write on it with a pencil. But give the whiteboard a go, see how much they get written up there and then that way they can move it around the room as well to use the sight word wall or anything like that that they need or we've got other charts around the room. I'm pointing and you can't see them. Um, give that a go as well and, and see if that makes a difference because sometimes it's just the energy level that's draining them. Uh, other options, if you wanna do standing up and you don't have one of those boards, grab a clipboard, lean it against something. Let them stand up, do it that way. Let them sit down. Some of my kids like to get into the lounge sit there and ride away and they'll do more there because it's more comfortable for them. Keeping in mind that these are our kids that are struggling to write. They need these tools to be able to do it with the intention that they'll eventually get to a table with a pencil and paper and be able to write. This isn't 
something that's going to be in place forever for them. If they still don't get to that point where they can write at the table, they probably need some OT intervention. If you want to try and build up some um, skills for those kids that don't have those fine motor skills, there's the anything with Play-Doh, anything that they can manipulate with their hands, like putting screws, um, uh, nuts and bolts, that sort of a thing. Um, putting letters inside Play-Doh or marbles inside Play-Doh and getting them to weed it out and shove it back in. One that I absolutely love, and this was recommended to me uh, by an OT, was you get some chalk, any chalk, doesn't matter. Um, these dirty ones here. Go outside and hit the pavement and do some sight words on the ground. Whatever you want, any sight words on the ground, do it anywhere. Um, another option is obviously up against the wall, doing it that way if you want that standing surface. And then get a wet sponge to wipe the word away. And I don't mean clean it away, I mean go over the letter. So if you've written bed, B E D, with the, the chalk, go back and do it with the wet sponge. B, wipe over it, dip it in the thing. E, D. The other option you've got is using the squirt bottle and going down. B, E, D. Because then they're getting that motion here where they can build up the muscles in their fingers and develop that as well. And it's a nice break between holding the chalk like this and then using their muscles like this. They love it too. It's so much fun. And it's not too messy if you've got the squirt bottle as opposed to using the the bucket with the sponge. Just checking my book to see what else I wrote down because I got stumped there. Okay, oh, if you go online, uh, you can also find raised lined paper. I think it was Amazon that they were from. So like kind of like braille, so they can feel where the lines are to be able to write on it. And that obviously depends on the needs of the student. And any of these obviously depend on the needs of the student and the likes and dislikes of the student. I find sometimes just standing up on that whiteboard, it feels like something special. So they want to give it a go. And the fact that it's being photographed and then printed to be, get stuck in their book. And then I can put those photos onto class dojo as well. And parents get to see it. And it just creates a greater response with the kids and then makes them a bit more excited about their writing. And when they know they're writing more that way, their confidence builds up and they feel really good about their writing and want to engage in it more. This is then when you can start to see their knowledge and their content in their writing. And then we can focus a bit more on all those different skills that come with writing. Um, but otherwise, uh, I hope this has helped out a little bit. Just a few tips there for you that I like to use. If you've got any other tips as well, pop them in the comments so that anyone else who's watching can um, have a look down below and see if there's anything different to give it a go. Uh, thank you to all my subscribers. I appreciate you very much. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'll chuck the link below and I'll chuck another one of my videos up the top so you can have a look at what else I've got to offer. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye.